Attention, ladies and gentlemen. You are now in the heart of New York's famous art colony, Greenwich Village, known the world over as the Latin Quarter of America. It was once the haunt of such famous artists as George Gershwin, Noel Coward, Isidore Duncan, Eugene O'Neill, Thomas Benton, and many others whose names will go down in history. It is the melting pot of genius, folks, a world of long-haired men and short-haired women, an atmospheric world where people are free, free living, free thinking. You Owe it to yourself, my friends, to see its interesting little streets, its shops, its colorful cafes. <laughs> hey, mister, uh, could I, uh, interest you in a youngster? Youngster? Yes, sir. Any one of these babies will give you an awful lot of comfort. Oh, no, I, I'm afraid I'm not much of a hand with uh, children. Oh, couldn't handle that. Well, maybe the next time. Good night, sir. <laughs> I'm just wild about every, and every's wild about me. The heavy breezes of the skeezes that fill me with ecstasy. He's sweet like peppermint candy, and just like honey from the bee. Oh, I'm just wild about Harry, and he just wild about candy. Not do without, he just wild about me. Say, oh, I'm just wild about Samba Batucada, Canavari Café, Burma Cumba, Viramundi, de uma figa de Guiné, and Harry's wild about Ter uma baiana com sandália no pé e provar um vatapá com um pouco de acarajé. They have the pieces, all the skisses that fill me with ecstasy. Gosta de baiana é pra mim de colher. He's sweet like peppermint candy. And just like honey from the TV, a cachaça granel. For me, ele apanhava papel. I'm just all about Harry. Pois ele é um yo-yo que gosta dessa yaya. E é louquinho por um samba lá na Praça Mauá. He just all. Anda louquinho por mim. E nuts. Sujeito louco como ele eu nunca vi. About me. Friend of Danny's. Okay, come on in. We did get in. <laughs> now we gotta have some fun. Hello, bro. Who are you? Friend of Danny's. Oh, no, you're not. No, I'm not, but can't I get in anyway? I, I'm from out of town. You gotta have a car to get in here. This is a club for members only. You got a car? No, I haven't. Bye. Here's your card. Friend of Danny's. Come in. Good evening. Check your hat, sir. In there. Friend of Danny's? I'm Danny, you dope. Excuse me, boss. I was looking the other way. Yeah, you always are. If you had to been, they couldn't attack this up outside. But I didn't see nothing. Well, keep your eyes open. You know what this Zig feels up to. Keep him away from here, all of them. Don't even let Zig feel himself in. Okay, boss, I'll watch. Yeah. How'd I go with the track today? Putrid. I'm gonna lay off them horses and try to raise it though some other way. Hello, Betty. How are you, sir? I'm okay, Danny. Superb, isn't it? Oh, 
masterpiece. What's this going on here? What's that delicatessen guy doing out there on the floor? Don't you remember, boss? They ain't doing so good with their store. They want to get back to the show business. You promised they could try out some night. Maybe you could use them. Are you nuts? I can't do that. How much do we owe that delicatessen? About 300. I can do it. I tell your fortunes. What name is yours? Harvey. Kenneth Harvey. Oh, what good look for you. I am tonight to make a special price for everyone whose name begins with a H. Would you like to take advantage of me? Well, I've never had my fortune told. Oh, you never? You don't know what you're losing. Don't rush me now. I'll find a table right away. Come on, come on, come on. Clear up. Ramuz. Ramuz. Clear up, clear up. Sit down, please. Sit down. Well, that's one way of getting a table. Oh, they got no tables. Danny lets them in free for nothing. They are what you call the local colors. Give me your hands. I think I read your palms. Mm -mm. What's big and strong hands, huh? Because our hands that do things. Do they do things? Well, yes, they play the piano. You see, I saw it. They're our hands of a genius, yes. I'll bet you live in New York, huh? No, the Middle West, Kansas. You should let me finish. I was going to say Middle West. Did you say your name was Princess Kirita? Yes, I did. I am an Indian princess. My father was a great red chief of the Blackfoots. Blackfoots? Yes, I am what you call a full-blooded American Indian. Oh, I see something very, very good for you. Very, very good. I see you play before big, big, big audience. Are you sure you see me? I don't play professionally. I write music. Oh, you make it, huh? Yeah. You're a composer? Well, yes, I guess you can call it that. Well, have no fears, have no fears. You'll be a big, big success. You see this big M here? Look, big M, it means music, money. Watch your money. You are a cinch. Don't be afraid. That will be a couple of books, please. My special price. Uh, did you say a couple of books? That's right, five dollars. Oh, I don't know whether I have a five dollar bill or not. Have you no monies? Well, I, I gave my last small bill to the man on the bus. What is those? Hundred dollar bills. I'm sorry. Sorry with so many? Uh, can you change one? We must go to Mr. Omar, the boss. I'll have a hunch he went to meet you. There is something about you he will like it. Oh, really? I, I don't want to bother him. Oh, for him it'll be a pleasure. He'll greet you with open hands. Well, then it's all set. We we'll start tomorrow night. Well, Danny, quick look. Ah. This is Mr. Garvey. Mr. Danny Omara. How do you do? Mr. Garvey is from Kansas. You have to make a change for him. He has nothing but a hundred dollars bill. A big wallet full. Well, I'm certainly glad to know you. Won't you sit down, Mr. Uh, Garvey, was it? Uh, no, Harvey is the name. Kenneth Harvey. Just call me Ken. Ken is, is a lovely name, huh? 
I have Uncle Ernst and Bulgari's name uh, is Ken. Princess, we'd love to have you join us, but we know this is your busiest part of the evening. Okay, I take a hint. I don't have to fall in a house. I mean, go change, Kenny's. Well, Ken, how do you like my little club? Cozy, ain't it? Yes, it is. Of course, this is only a sideline. Confidentially, my real racket is a theater. You own one? Oh, no, I ain't that big a sucker. I rent him. I'm gonna put on a show. Oh, you're a producer? That's uh, me. I'm gonna give New York something new, something artistic. Yeah, sounds interesting. I'm calling it the Greenwich Village Gaieties. And I go to bat as soon as I get my hands on a few incidentals. You know, talent, ideas, scenery, of course, the money. I uh, understand you have lots of uh, talent. Well, I've written a concerto, and the folks at home think it's pretty good. Written a what? A concerto. Uh, yeah, sure. Oh, speaking of talent, here's a little girl I'm gonna star in my show. Everybody hand in hand, swinging down the lane. Everybody feeling grand, swinging down the lane. That's the time I miss the bliss that we might have known. Nights like this when I'm all alone. When the moon is on the rise, honey, I'm so blue. Watching lovers making eyes. Like we used to do When the moon is on the wane Still I'm waiting all in vain Should be swinging down the lane With you When the moon above is on the rise Honey, I'm so blue Watching all those lovers making eyes Like we used to do When the moon is on the way Still I'm waiting all in vain Should be swinging down the Class, huh? Yeah, she's lovely. Sit tight, I'll bring her over. Come on over here, sugar. I want you to meet an old pal of mine. Baby, shake hands with Ken Harvey, the famous composer. This is Bonnie Watson. How do you do, Mr. Harvey? I'm glad to know you, Miss Watson, and I enjoy the song very much. Thank you. Well, sit down, sit down. Yeah, the song was okay, but I don't know, Shug, you weren't at your best tonight. No. No, you were only sensational. Usually you kill the people. <laughs> I was telling Ken about our new show. I thought I might persuade him to contribute some of his talent. Skipper, could I see you for a minute? Okay. Don't go away, I'll be right back. You know that guy from the Zitfield office? Yeah. He's in again. I thought I told you to keep him out of here. Yeah, boss, he must have slipped in behind some party. Where is he? Over there at the bar. Hello, partner. Hello, Danny. Just happened to be down to Villies. Thought I'd drop in for a few laughs. Yeah, sure. Come on over here. I want to talk to you a minute. We had this all settled. Now, look, Danny, I didn't come down here to talk to Bunny. Don't lie to me. I know what you're down here for. Listen, Bunny don't want no part of Zig feeling. That's that. Danny, just because you're stuck on her, do you realize what you're doing to this girl? Look what happened when you wouldn't let her go before. Ziggy found another girl, and today she's a big star. Well, if he's got a star, what does he want with Bunny? He's lining up a new show. What do you think I'm doing? 
Anyway, what can Zigfield do for her that I can't do? Stick some feathers in her dome and have her coming down them steps. Ah, oh, yeah, my print. I'm going to give him something different. I got the best guys in the business to help me put it on. Yeah, I know. That's what you're telling her. But when? When I'm good and ready, see? I'm working on it right now. But get this straight. When Bonnie goes uptown, I'm taking her. All right, Danny. Have it your own way. I'll but... finish your drink and blow it. The next time I catch you hanging around trying to talk to her, I'm going to tuck your head under your arm. Well, where were we? Miss me, Sugar? Dreadfully. Where are you staying, Ken? You live here in the village? No, I'm staying at a little hotel uptown. What for? You ought to be down here with the rest of us that's creating. Hey, you people going to keep Ken stalking all night? Maybe he'd like to have some fun. You like to dance, Kenny's? Uh, well, yes, certainly. Then come on. Let's do it. Pardon us. How's that for luck? The guy's filthy with dough and he falls right in our laps. Then he's not an old friend? No, Carita winged him just a few minutes ago. I wish you wouldn't do things like this, Danny. Like what? Promoting him. You don't have to. What do you mean, promoting him? Okay. I'm steering him into a sound investment. You believe in the show we're gonna do, don't you? Oh, that's not the point. It's the way you're going after him. Aha! We are Johnny's on the spot, yes? You're getting better, Princess. This is one time a guy pulled a cork and you were here before the pop. Well, I don't want to come back, but the music, she quit. Get another glass, Joe. Yes, sir. If you don't mind, Danny, I think I'll run along home. I've learned it's a lot better to have regrets in the morning than a hangover. I've learned that lesson, too. Could I walk home with you? Thanks, but I haven't far to go. I'm sure Mr. Merrill wouldn't mind if I take a rain check. Of course I might. Sit down and finish your drink. I'll see that Barney gets home all right. Well, that's nice of you, Danny, but after all, if Mr. Harvey wants to bother... I insist, and I hope to see you both again soon. Good night. Good night, Danny. Oh, uh, pardon me. Uh, Princess, that hundred-dollar bill... Oh, the foolish things of me. My mind, she slips. Ninety-five dollars. You like to count him? I'm sure that won't be necessary. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Corita. Good night. I don't like this. Why should take him away? Yeah. I'm asking myself the same question. Good night, Ralphie. Good night. Good night. Well, which way? Where do you live? Upstairs. Just upstairs? Way up on the second floor. I told you it wasn't far. Well, it's uh, getting kind of late. Don't you think we'd better get started? <laughs> Where did Danny say you were from? Wichita. That's in Kansas, isn't it? That's right. Um, tell me something, will you? Do all Kansas boys go around nightclubs flashing hundred-dollar bills? Oh, that. Oh, I just happened to cash a check today. <laughs> well, if I were you on your next sightseeing tour, I'd carry some smaller ones. And I'd flash them around one at a time. They'll last a lot longer. So will you. All right, I'll take your advice. The next time you see me, I'll have a pocket full of dimes. Good night. Thanks a lot for letting me walk home with you. It was sweet of you to be so gallant, Mr. Harvey. Oh, you've got a piano. Why, yes. I haven't played one since I've been in New York. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> no, that's all right. It's a little out of your line, though, isn't it? Still kidding me about the classics, huh? Look, I like popular music, too. I always sing when I'm in the shower. Good. I'll have to drop by the hotel someday and catch your act. You don't think I'm alone here, do you? Just because I try to write something a little more lasting? Good heavens, no. When I first came to the village, I had some pretty arty ideas myself. I had visions of becoming a great poetess. You know, a second Edna St. Vincent Millay. That didn't last long. You can't eat old rejection slips, you know. No. It's different with you. You can afford to hold out. You're wealthy. Wealthy? Well, aren't you? Danny said you were. Oh, that $100 bill must have fooled him. No. 
Truth is, I've saved a few thousand dollars, that's all, teaching music in Kansas. I was on the faculty of a small college you've probably never even heard of. A professor? <laughs> Not that good, no. I was just an instructor. I've always wanted to come to New York, and when I finished my concerto, I decided I'd make the plunge. Had any luck? Oh, the publishers let me in all right, but the minute I mentioned concerto, you'd be surprised how fast I find myself out on the sidewalk again. I'm beginning to feel like an old Shakespearean actor, you know, up and down Broadway with a trusty music role under my arm. <laughs> Sounds strangely familiar. It's like that with poems, too. Yeah, I'm still trying, though. There's one man I think would like it. If I can only get to him, Kowalski. Ever heard of him? The famous conductor? Yes. Of course. I think he'd understand what I'm trying to get at. You didn't think you'd find him at Danny's Den tonight, did you? Oh, no, no. I was sort of seeing the town. I just happened in there by chance. I'm glad I did, though. Otherwise, I wouldn't have met you. That's a very pretty speech. Excuse me. I come, fair lady, bearing gifts. <laughs> How do you like this? Hello, Bunny. This wouldn't be your little idea by any chance. Who, me? You're, you're having a party, ain't you? That's what they told me. Who told you? Oh, I don't know. Just got around. You shouldn't leave your lights lit and be playing the piano this late. You know the village better than that, sugar. Hey, Bonnie, how about some glasses? Some nice, big, tall ones. Mr. Romero will assist you. He seems to be in charge of the arrangement committee. This will give you a faint idea of the kind of privacy we enjoy down here. Well, for this time of night... Uh, for this time of night, isn't it a bit uh, vigorous? Oh, not for them. They had one of these parties last week. The case comes up this Thursday. I'll get them. Excuse me, I'd better get some plates. They'll have food all over the place. Hey, Princess, where's the absent? Honey, I got you. Come on, Candace, you have a nice drink. That's the stuff, Princess. One side, weapons coming up. Well, hello, Ken, old boy. I didn't know you were here. Say, you and me gotta have a little talk later on, huh? You know, this boy's got a lot on the board. I've been thinking it over. I'm liable to cut him in on something big. Yes, I know. I'm here behind you. Princess, with my love. Thank you. Please mention it and you, sir. Oh, no, give it to Ken. I'll get my own. Oh, then to you, sir. And now, quaff to your heart's delight. That. His name is Hofer. Lives upstairs. He used to play in some big orchestra. He plays a fiddle. <sighs> Boys, that's good, huh? <coughs> when you wore a tulip, a sweet yellow tulip, and I wore a big red rose. Red rose. When you caressed me, was in hell. Carita, did I wake you up? I'm terribly worried about Kenneth Harvey. What happened to him? Did he say goodnight to you? No, I don't know what's happened. He just disappears. When I saw him last, he was talking to Hofer. You know, this fiddle players who lives upstairs. Yes, I saw them. What was that all about? Hofer was telling him he knew this big conductor, Kavaski, used to play in his orchestra. He think maybe he can get Kavaski to listen to Kenneth's concerto. Oh, that would be wonderful. I hope he can. Ken is so anxious to meet Kowalski. Well, I hope he gets home all right. That punch was a little strong. Good night, Carita.
good morning, oh what a lovely morning, the sunshine has rolled the clouds away. Good morning, good morning, oh what a lovely feeling, good morning, this is our lucky day. At last, at last! Drake, Biglow, it's happened, hey! What is it? What happened? Good news from your publisher? Good news, it's wonderful. I've arrived. I'm a success. Yes? My book has been banned in Boston. No! Really? Good morning. Good morning. Oh, what a lovely morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I come wearing gifties. Oh, you're so much nicer. Come in. <laughs> What's happened? You're not here from Kenny's yet? Not a word. Sit down, Karita. You're just in time for coffee. I'll get another cup. I hope you don't lose him. He's a cute fellow. Say, you think you give him a jingles on the phone to see if he gets lost? I can't. I don't even know where he's stopping. He said he was at a hotel, but he didn't say which one. Mm, I think maybe you like Kenny's a little, huh? Well, he's certainly <laughs> different. I like him very much. Thanks. Oh, you give him the gifts, pimples. Well, uh, have you been there all night? Oh, I'm afraid so. No wonder we couldn't find him. Come here, sit down. Yes, yeah, sit here. Oh, can I have some of that coffee? You certainly may. Here, take mine. Last night you drank too much jeans, yes? Very little is too much for me. Yeah, I think so. Bonnie, you up yet? Come in. Morning, sugar. Hello, Danny. I've got the great... Good morning. Well, hello. <laughs> uh, Kenneth and I just dropped in for breakfast. Would you like some coffee? Oh. Uh, oh, no, no, I just ate. Look, come on over here, everybody. I want you to hear a tune. It's been running through my head all morning. How's this for a terrific love song in a show? Da, 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 dee, da, 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 I love you. Da, 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 dee, da, 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 da. Like it? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. I liked it last night when I heard Ken play it. That's from my concerto. Yes, sure. It's come back to my brains now, too. You're crazy. How could I play a concerto? Let's see if you recognize this. <laughs> All right, so there I like it's a coincidence. I still say it's a great number for the show. Now look, Danny, it belongs to Ken and we can't use it, so that's that. Unless he has other tunes. Yeah, how about that? Ken, you must have some others up your sleeve. Well, not right offhand, but I suppose I could try to write something. Yes, maybe we get something out of your heads. Yeah, you don't have to worry about the words. We can get lyric read. It's the main thing is we gotta get something special for Bonnie. I hope I can turn out something. I'll certainly try. Oh, that would be wonderful. Good, now you're talking. I wish you didn't live so far uptown, or you ought to be down here closer to us. Danny, how about Studio X on the top floor? No, no, can't do that. Bro's up there with the boys. That's their laboratory. Let them use the basement. I don't like them upstairs. Why not? Last week, the gin blown up. My apartment smells all day like a dry martini. Wasn't gin, it was scotch. Gin or scotch, they both stinks. What's that got to do with it? Studio X is ideal for Ken, and you can use my piano. Well, thanks, that's very nice of you, but I don't... Now, there's no buts about it. It's all settled. Bro, for the boys, go to the basement. It's dark down there. They'll probably get the labels mixed, but who cares? You said him. It all come from the same bed, tops, any house. Come on, Ken, go and see. I think you'll like it, Ken. It's an awfully nice room. Oh, I don't doubt it, but uh, I was going to try and see Kavaski this morning. Well, go and see him. While you're gone, we'll get your room all fixed up for you. And Ken, is for your windows, I have just the things. Gorgeous drooperies. Drooperies? Mm-hmm. Yards of batik for my native Samoa. My grandmother, she make with her own hands. Oh, Samoa. Mm -hmm. Oh, today you're not an Indian, huh? No, no, last night I find I make a big mistake. <laughs> now that you're one of the family, Ken, you might as well know. Corita was born in Buffalo, New York. Her mother was a Portuguese blacksmith. Her mother? A blacksmith? Mm-hmm, that's right. Under the spreading chestnuts. <laughs> <laughs> If 
Excuse me, Mr. Kavarsky. Well, what is it? There is a young gentleman at the door to see you about some music he has written. You know I am busy. Why do you even bring this cart in? But it's a concerto, sir. It's quite out of the ordinary. Oh, it is, is it? And who says so? He does, sir. He looks like a young... Are you out of your mind? Get rid of him. Send him away. And stop bothering me. Yes, sir. Now, to get back to you, naturally, I must refuse. Oh, Maestro, you do not understand what this means to me. A fee? Is that it? Naturally, he'll have me do the orchestration. There will be the usual charge. And may I point out to you, Maestro, that this will permit me to remove myself from your charitable generosity? In other words, if I help you perpetrate a lie, you would stop bothering me for money. Oh, not a lie, Maestro, not a lie. You will like it, I know you will. I only ask you to listen to him. What's the young man's name? Harvey, Kenneth Harvey, Maestro. The man who was just here? Yes. Uh, no, no, that is impossible. He doesn't know where you live. But this is his card, isn't it? Yes. Didn't you hear me have the butler order him away? Oh, all the better you did, Maestro. Now he will be convinced that because of your great affection for me, you have consented to hear him play. To hear him, mind you. But not say I like it if I don't. Oh, naturally, Maestro, naturally. A thousand things, a thousand things. I will contact him and communicate with you. <laughs> oh, did I say goodbye? <laughs> Hello, Carita. Good morning. Hello, Bunny. Well, Carita, what on earth is all that? Haven't you here? Ben is giving a big costume ball at Webster Hall. And this is my costume. Well, what's the occasion? Who's the ball for? For himself. Tickets $25 per couple. And this way he makes the money to put on our show. Oh, that sounds like a wonderful idea. You know, he makes tons of money. Everybody's come. And for the best costume, he gives the price $1,000. How can he make any money if he gives away $1,000? Ah, this is where the rubs come in. It's so fixed, because I win the prize. <laughs> It's all for art, say, remember that. Whatever we do, we only do for art, say. Come in and see the latest in apparel. One gal is wearing nothing but a barrel. It's all for art, say, that we are here. probably think the man of Molly Coddles, but for Brother, other you only have to ask the models. They, they only have one complaint, and art is the first to pay, but whatever they do, they only do for art's sake. It's all for art's sake, remember, remember that. Oh, uh, whatever, whatever we do, we only do for art's sake. That character in the lavender tuxedo is it's really a soda jerk from Toledo. It's all for art's sake. The goofy guys, the goofy guys, who wear those flowing ties. Whenever you see a wealthy looking mama, she's terribly interested in the drama. She'll probably back a play for the boy in a blue beret. But whatever she does, she only does for heart. It's all for heart's sake. It really is. We suffer a lot and all for what? For heart's sake. Whenever we dance, it ain't for cash or glory. It's only because we love our toy Chikari. It's all for heart's sake. The girls who pose in hardly any clothes. We're happy if we impress the critics with our finesse. Cause whatever we do, we only do for our sake. 
a lady who writes a poem about a valley Is getting her inspiration in the alley Her publisher comes to tea But the lady is 63 So whatever she does, she only does the Pleasure of this dance, Your Highness? Why, certainly. Delighted. Excuse us. You're new around here, ain't you? You don't dance like nobody I know. Uh, I'm from Vienna. And this gay music makes me so homesick for my beloved Danube. Oh, is that so? Is that your husband? <laughs> you silly, you tickle me. Oh, not here, Queenie, in front of all these people. I know a better place. Do you? Yes. Come on. Termites. What can the troubles be? I could have had some other guy, some Harry Dick or Tom, but all I want is you, you sweet and sandy Harry Bum. I think your arm have your net hidden system So I absolutely must love you I can't understand why Ken didn't tell me Kowalski wanted to hear it. I would have told you myself, but I felt that he surely would come to his senses. 
Where did he go? I left him up here a few minutes ago. Here he is. Here he is. Ken. Oh, hello. Got kind of warm for me in there. Ken, I want to talk to you. Hofer just told me that Kowalski's anxious to hear your concerto. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, let's invite him opening night, then he can hear you sing some. But... You see, he's not only a great musician, but a great old gentleman. Now look, Ken, we're not going to be heroic about this. Naturally, you're going to play for Kowalski. You've got to. What about the show? Well, the show will have to get along without your music. Danny can get other writers. Precisely. Heck, writers of that type are a dime a dozen. Now, may I phone Kowalski and tell him we are going to be there in the morning? I don't know what to say. After all, Bonnie, you've written lyrics. Nonsense. Forget it. What do a few hours of mine matter? It represents years of your work. Go phone Kowalski. Yes, I shall contact him immediately. Bonnie, I don't feel right about this. Oh, come on, Ken. Let's be practical. Of course, I want to sing your music, but not when it means you're giving up an opportunity like this. Herbert. Uh, please, may I use your telephone? All the pay booths are busy and it is very urgent. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, no, no. Use that one over there. Yes. I'll go out and see how Joe's doing. Okay. Hey, Cortland, 6263, please. Well, what's the good news, Herb? Got it figured? Here's a total, Danny, and all except the second window. He's still checking. Wow, 15 grand and more to come. Boys, that hit in the jackpot, son. And we still got the dough coming in from the program ads. The show puts the show on ice, huh, boss? You said it. Hello. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kavosky, please. Oh, it is you, maestro. Excuse me for calling you up so late, but I have great news for you. Uh, Mr. Harvey accepts your most cordial invitation and will play his concerto for you tomorrow morning. Oh, that's wonderful, Maestro. A thousand thanks. We shall be there tomorrow, promptly at 11. Goodbye, Maestro. Mm. <laughs> Just a minute. What's all this guff you're dishing out? Oh, have you not heard? Thanks to the insistence of Kavosky, Kenneth has withdrawn his composition for new show. And we are going to play it tomorrow for the great Maestro. He's going nowhere. He gave that music to us. Sure he did. We are in rehearsals. I got too much dough sunk in this to let anything stop me now. I've even got a colored act trying out tomorrow morning, and they're rehearsing with his music. Ah, if I have been instrumental in saving his immortal music from such desecration, then already I have been repaid. Please. Let me try to pause. Leave him alone. You stay here and finish checking up. I'll straighten this out. Okay, boss. Let me know the damn box. Tomorrow. Now, 
No, on second thought, I think hope was a good idea. Let him go right ahead. Upon the trumpet blow. Upon the trumpet blow. Upon the trumpet blow. And it goes to your toe. And why do you suppose? And why do you suppose? And why do you suppose? That it goes to your toe. A fella never knows. A fella never knows why it goes to your toe. But you forget your woe. But you forget your woe. But you forget your woe. And it goes yeah. to your toe. You can't use that music. Don't you worry about that. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Now, just like you did it, boys, that's just the way we'll do it in the show. That suits us, Mr. O'Mare. All right, now hop over to the theater and see Bert Hendricks, the director. He knows all about you. I'll be over there in a few minutes. Yes, yes sir. sir. Socko, ain't it? Absolutely the first words. Bonnie. He likes it. Kowalski likes my concerto. Ken, that's wonderful. I knew he would. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm still shaking, but I, I got through it all right. 
You mean he listened to the whole thing? From start to finish. Of course, it needs some work, a few changes, but Hofer's going to help me as he orchestrates it. Hofer, huh? I could have told this. Uh, what's the setup? Is this guy Kowalski going to put it on? I hope so. He's waiting now to see the orchestration. And since he likes it that much, he will. Yeah, sure he will. Danny, I I'm sorry about the show. I hate taking the music away. Forget it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Look, uh, this calls for a celebration. Why don't we all go out and have lunch together? Huh? No, you guys go ahead. I got to hop over to the theater. Oh. Danny, wait for me. I go too. All right, come on. We celebrate later. We don't have not works to do, huh? Okay, we get okay. together tonight. Come on. Bye, princess. Thanks, Danny. Forget it. Uh, you don't suppose they're upset, do you? Of course not. They're as glad for you as I am. It's just that they're both up to their necks in the show, that's all. Now, what you do? You have no music. Oh, yes, we have. We'll still use this music. Not only that, I'm going to speed up rehearsals. We may even open earlier, see? How can you do this? Now, look, are you going to make it tough to win? I got enough trouble with this Zigfield on my neck. Excuse me, Mestro. Did I have to leave some juniper juice in your closet? Well, there's something in there. I thought it was cleaning fluid. Same thing. <laughs> well, here it is. And how's the old concerto coming along? Good, huh? Fine, fine. We finished the first half this morning. Hofer's over at Kowalski's with it now. Yeah? Well, good luck to you, pal. Keep plugging. America! America! It's fantastic. It is unbelievable. He liked it? Liked it. He worships it. Each note, each passage, each... He was amazed. Oh, oh that is a load off my mind. Oh, Ken, you should have come with me. Your head would have been in the clouds. He begs that you permit him to make all the arrangements at once. Arrangements? Yes. To play your concerto at Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall? Mm -hmm. Of co course you told him that... Oh, I naturally accepted for you and told him to proceed. Oh. Hofer, you don't know how grateful I am. Uh, if it hadn't been for you... Oh, don't give it another thought, my friend. I'm only too happy to be of service. Oh, I forgot to show you what he thinks of it. Here, look. The maestro's personal check of $3,500. What's that for? Well, uh, there seems to be some nonsense about posting a bond for the musician's salary. Uh, it's just a deposit, you know. Oh. <laughs> of course, we will have to raise a similar amount, but after all, it is so insignificant. I'm sure we'll arrange it somehow. Well, uh, as long as it's only a deposit, I have that much I can put up. Oh, I love this. It has life. Yeah, but, uh, I beg I your pardon? I said, I'll be glad to put up the other 3500 Oh, that is very generous of you. It's a pure formality. You know that. Oh, of course. Uh, I'll write out a check. Ah, this is superb. Superb! Funny. Hofer just called me from Carnegie Hall. Kowalski ordered the first rehearsal this morning. The orchestra's there now. Really? Yes. He's not wasting any time, is he? No, get your hat. I want you to be the first to hear it with a full orchestra. Oh, can I can't. I'm due at the theater at 11. Oh, can't you get out of it somehow? Rehearse this afternoon. I don't see how I can now. They've called everybody. But I'll certainly be pulling for you. Oh, I know you will. But I do wish I had you along for moral support. Oh, will you come to the theater when it's over? I'll be so anxious to know what happened. All right, I will. I'll see you later. Ken. 
much for luck. No, thanks. Now I can't miss. Bye. Say, my friend, it looks to me as if Hofer has, uh, well, simply stolen your money. But the orchestration, he said you liked it, thought it was excellent. I have seen no orchestration. I haven't even heard from Hofer since the morning you played here. Then obviously you weren't going to conduct it at Carnegie Hall. Of course not. I know nothing about such a thing. As a favor to Hofer, I agree to hear you play, yes. I also told him if I liked it and could help you, I would. But that's as far as it went. I understand now. It's all very clear. I only hope you can find this offer. I hope we both can. I doubt it. I've already tried to reach him on the phone. Sorry to have bothered you, sir. Not at all. Oh. Where's Danny? Oh, I don't know. He was here just a minute ago. Oh, I see him. Bonnie, too. don't be long, will you? I want to work the boys with you in the concerto number. Okay. Concerto number? Yeah. Aren't you mistaken? That's out. Out? If it is, Danny didn't say anything to me about it. He saw it's rehearsing just a few minutes ago. But that belongs to Ken Harvey. We're not using any of his music in the show. Well, you better speak to Danny about it. As far as I know, it's still in. I was over at your place this morning. They're still painting on it. Them arches ain't nearly as wide as they are in this model. Danny. Oh, hello, sugar. Danny, I want to see you a minute. Well, sure, honey. Be right with you. Now, look, follow through on this, will you? Boys, our gals are never going to get through them with them hoop skirts on. Okay, Danny, we'll take care of it. We're right fighting away. time, you know. What's on your mind, sugar? Close the door. What's the matter? You act like you're mad or something. I'm not mad. Just a little confused. Bert just told me Ken's concerto number is still in the show. That isn't true, is it? Now, look, sugar, why don't you let me worry about them things? Danny, you're not actually going through with this. You can't. Why not? Well, it would ruin Ken's chances with Kowalski. He'd never play it at Carnegie Hall. He won't anyway. Look, all this stuff about Kowalski is just a lot of baloney. He ain't seen none of Ken's music. This guy Hofer's just been stringing him along. And that's another thing. I just saw Hofer sneaking off in a cab. Sure, certainly. He was taking a powder. I knew he would as soon as he got a hold of Ken's dough. He got money from Ken? Not much, 3500 just about all he had. How do you know so much about this? I had Brophy tailing this guy, Hofer, watching every move he made. Danny, you don't mean to say you knew Hofer was going to cheat Ken out of this money and you did nothing to stop it. Why should I? Did he think of me when he moved in and tried to break us up? And to get even, you let this... If he was sap enough to be taken, why should I stop him? Anyway, if Hofer hadn't done it, somebody else would have come along. Look, Bunny, it's better this way. Now the guy will go home where he belongs. New York's no place for him. Can't you see what I mean? No, I don't see. And if you're just trying to excuse yourself, you're only making it worse. Now, wait, buddy. Maybe what I did was wrong. But you're forgetting something. I happen to be in love with you, see? Oh, I know I got a lot of faults. I ain't exactly Fifth Avenue, but I ain't a dumb lug either. And when somebody moves in and tries to take you away from me, I'm not going to stand for it without putting up a fight. You know that, or I wouldn't be here now trying to buck a guy like Ziegfeld. Yes, Danny, and I appreciate it. But you've done a terrible thing here. Look, Bunny, where I learned to fight, there ain't no book of rules. It's the results that count. What results? You may have gained your purpose, but has it ever occurred to you what you're doing to me? Oh, I know you think you're in love with him, but you'll get over that as soon as he's gone. No, Danny. I'll never get over it. I love him way too much. You do? You sure? Yes, Danny. Very sure. Hey, did Drove get here yet? <laughs> Come on, boss, I'm here. Excuse me, see you later, Drove. 
What are you going to do? Get the guy's dough back for him. What you want, boss? I hear Hofer skipped. You know where he went, don't you? Sure, I got George Taylor. I can put my mitts on him any time you want. Go grab him. Bring him back to the joint. Okay, boss. Make sure he's got that dough on him. You bet, boss. Thanks, Danny. You would pick a day I didn't shave. Let's go. Yeah, buddy. Come on. to spend a few dollars of it uh, for my room. That'll be on me, but the rest better be here. It is, Danny. I give you my word. OK, that'll be all for now. Uh, could I go out the back way, Danny? I don't want to take any chances on running into him. Let him out the back way, bro. OK, boss. Come on. It's all here. You take care of it. I'd better watch for him, don't you think, and try to see him before he reports it to the police. Yeah, that's a good idea. A couple of kisses from you and he'll forget about the whole thing. I hope so. But just the same, you'd better be with me in case I need you. Yeah, sure, okay. But wait for me, will you, Sugar? I want to see if I have any mail. You know, Brophy, I'm so sorry I did this. So sorry I did it so badly. Good morning, Candice. You come to the theater today? Candice! Candice! Is something wrong, Candice? Why don't you speak to me? You better not waste your time, Carita. They're downstairs. You better go down and get your cut. Who's cut? Somebody's hurt? You cut somebody? What's happened, Candice? Are you mad at something? Not at all. I'll just check the loss off to experience. Probably cheap at that. But I don't understand. Something going on at the concertos? Plenty, and you know it. I don't know anything. I give you my honor. Stop, Candice. Stop to me. There isn't anything to talk about. Besides, I gotta catch a train. But why you catch a train? You go someplace? Yeah, home, where I belong. But you can go home now. You're going to miss the show. She's off on a Monday night. Oh, it's too bad to miss that, isn't it? But why you go home? Tell me why you go home. Have you talked to Bonnie and Danny about this? No, and I don't intend to. Morning, Princess. I have no time to sleep. The morning is now. Oh, Danny. Oh, boy, what is Mr. O'Mara? Did you see him? Yeah, him and Miss Watson just went out. Said something about going down to the subway station to watch for somebody. Oh. Give me two bottles of scotch, will you please? What for? Don't I Don't ask any questions. Give me, give me, give me two bottles oh. of scotch. I don't know what's happened, but take this with you. You are so upset. Maybe we need a drink on the train, yeah? Thanks. Thank you. That's not a bad idea, is that? Yes. O'Shea reporting. Take them the gorra, O'Shea. The tops of Devon and Tuya. What's this, Princess? I didn't know you were Irish. Sure. And will I be anything else? Born in the count of Corks? <laughs> Look, Oshie, you see that man there in the street with the bundles under his armies? Mm-hmm, yeah. He just tried to sell him some moonshine. Tried to sell you what? Moonshine is whiskey, sketch whiskey. He's a bootslegger. Are you sure? Are sure as my name is Querido Tools. You arrest him quick. Okay, I'll nab him. The whole thing is a frame-up. Both bottles were given to me. I've been framed ever since I got to this town. You can't do this to me. Do I look like a bootlegger? Listen, come back here. I've got to get a lawyer.
Hello, pal. Remember me? The, uh, baby carriage? Yeah, I remember. I thought you would. Uh... Can I, uh... Interest you, partner? Yes. This time you can. Good. Seats. They must be there. It's the eighth row. Let me look. No, they ain't here yet. Danny, suppose Brof can't bail him out. No, it can't be that. My lawyer fixed everything. All Brof had to do was go down there with the dough. On stage, everybody. On stage. Oh, stop worrying. He'll be here if I have to go down and get him myself. Get set, sugar, and knock him dead. I don't care why they did it. It's the dirtiest trick I ever heard of. But that's the only thing they can do. You were so bullheaded. Well, we just got time to make the show, and now you're going to feel like cutting your throat. Why? What makes you say that? Because you're going to hear your music in a number that's going to knock your ears off. Oh, so that's why they pulled this. So they can steal my music, too, huh? Well, they're not going to get away with it. I'll stop them if I have to slap an injunction on the whole show. Come here, you lunkhead. <laughs> hey, my fair.
shoes and go to town. Give me a band, then a band, then a. I want to pick them up and lay them down. I don't care for a hoochie coochie and I don't like the shimmy. Treat my feet to a tropic beat and gimme, 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 gimme a band, then a band, then a. But I don't want the wrong way, oh, I don't want the wrong way. I only want to dance, 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 da, 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 da. Any band that is handy can make me feel dandy. I don't need a brandy for kicks. Uh huh. Give me a rhythm that's Latin, and I will show Manhattan my South American drink samba. <laughs> Tem torço de seda, tem Corrente de ouro, tem Tem pata rendada, tem Tem saia engomada, tem Sandália enfeitada, tem E tem graça como ninguém Como ela requebra Quando você se requebra, caia por cima de mim Caia por cima de mim, caia por cima de mim E quando eu penso na Bahia Nem sei que dó que me dá, oi, me dá, me dá, me dá, yo, yo. E se eu pudesse qualquer dia, eu ia de novo pra lá. Eu vou, eu vou, se vai, yo, yo. And that's why. I don't care for a hoochie coochie and I don't like the shimmy. Treat my feet to a tropic beat and gimme, 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 gimme a band, then a band, then a. I want my hips to say hip hip hooray. Give me a band, then a band, then a. But I don't want the Romeo, I don't want the romance. No, I only want to dance. this number out front. It's great, really. I told you it would be, didn't I? Yeah, but Kavaski, how did you work that? That was easy. He felt so bad over what happened to you, he was tickled to death. And essentially, I made him a present of the best oil paint in my whole collection. Oh, thanks, Danny. I owe you and Bonnie a lot. She must be pretty disgusted with me, though. The dressing room's on the other side. Why don't you go over and find out for yourself? I'll do that. I'll see you later. <laughs>
whisper seems to cheer me. I know it's true, there's no one dear but you. You're whispering why you'll never leave me. Whispering why you'll never grieve me. Whisper and say that you believe.